The church that God builds, he also finances. This is what Mark said today. I mean, I already knew this, but he confirmed it. What man builds, man has to carry and man has to finance. I don't want that. I don't want the responsibility of carrying anything. I want God to carry my business. I want him to carry my family. I want him to carry this ministry on eagle's wings. And that's the promise. That's the promise right there, is that he built this church. And it says, I will build this church. I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against this church. The ones out there that are built by man, there's not such a promise. So, I want to do what my father, what I see my father doing, and I don't want to be out of alignment in authority. Because if you're out of alignment in authority, then you don't fit together in the body. There's only one head, and we are the body. And I told this guy, I said, you're just a hand without a body. What, what good are you? You can't do anything. You don't fit together. You, we got to fit together. Colossians says we're knitted together. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I'll come back. I'll make, come back to that. <coughs> so, Jesus was hated by his brothers. Right? Yes. Jesus. Jesus was hated by, I meant to say Jesus. Jesus was hated by his brothers. He was hated by his Jew brothers, and he was also hated by his brothers, too. His brothers told him to go on up to the, um, the ceremony. You had to go to the uh, temple of the Lord three times. You had to go Passover, Pentecost, and then Feast of Tabernacles. And it was one of the celebrations, I can't remember right now, but <clears throat> they told him to go on up there because they knew that he was being hunted. They wanted to kill him. And he said, he said, I, you go ahead, you know, I've got, I've got my own things to take care of. And he knew he was going, but he had his timing. God, God told him when to move. But his actual brothers hated him. And the reason why I found, what, I couldn't find it. I looked, it's, just, it's, a, it's a, a word that I couldn't think of. But what it says in essence is, it says that, um, it shows that Jesus his brothers treated him badly because they... You think about little kids. Jesus was from another father. He was from the, son, the Holy Spirit. You know, the Father and the Holy Spirit. But see, when little kids grow up together, you know, they're just little kids, and they don't know anything about them being from another father until the kids around them start saying, you know, your brother ain't your uh, real brother. And then what happens? That's what happened. And I found it in Psalms. I can't remember where it is, but I'll find it. But that's what happened. It shows in Psalms that he was, he was treated very badly when he was a kid because of that. Because he was from, they came home and they said, Mom, is that true? That Jesus is from another dad? <laughs> What's going on here? And you know, how, how do you explain to a child that your brother is the son of God? And it's the same story as Joseph. You're going to bow down to him. Well, I don't want to, you know, because he's my brother. Familiar spirit. It's, it's not good. Um, but the thing is, is, is Jesus was hated by his brothers, and Joseph was hated by, hated by his brothers. Can you hear the crowd say, we don't want him to be our ruler? Crucify him. His Jewish brothers. He came to his own, John 1 says, and they did not receive him. Okay, now let's go on to 5 through 7. Okay, then Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. So the dream caused, when he told it to them, caused them to hate him. He said to them, please listen to this dream which I have had. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep rose up, and also stood erect. And behold, your sheep gathered around, and bowed down to my sheep. Think of Joseph as the true followers of God. That's what we are. Okay, the ones that we understand that we, um, uh, I'll say it. Well, just think of them as the true followers of God. And his brothers as the false church. The ones that are man-built. 
Okay? They don't want to be ruled over. They got the big churches and they got the money and whatever. And here we are and they, we're going to rule over them? No, that's not going to happen, so they say. Now the two dreams, let's go to 9 for 11. Now he had still another dream and related to his brothers and said, Lo, I have had still another dream and behold the sun and the moon and the eleven stars were bowing down to me. He related it to his father and his brothers, and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have had? Shall I and your mother and your brothers actually come to bow ourselves down before you to the ground? His brothers were jealous of him. But his father kept the saying in his mind. Okay, the son is pictured as Jacob. By this time, Rachel has died. We've already read that. Rachel's died. And Leah is the mom. She's the only wife that's left. I mean, well, I don't know about the, the other concubines, but she's the only wife, right? Um, so, so Leah is the moon, or Rachel, whichever, you know how that goes. And then the stars are the 11, 11 brothers. See, Joseph had 11 brothers. It says in Colossians 1.1, 1, 1, it says, Jesus will recon- reconcile all things to himself. Every knee will bow before him. And this is, a, this is a, a prophetic dream about Jesus. Okay? Now, why? I want you to think about this. Why, after telling them the first dream, would he share the second dream? If they hated him with the first dream, it seems to me I'd be going, I ain't going to tell you the second dream, right? Well, because we have to speak the truth. Because their blood is on our hands if we don't. That's pretty serious. It would have been easier not to share. Right? John fifteen eighteen says, If the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you because the world loves its own. But you are not of this world because I chose you out of this world. We're not to mingle with the world. We're to be in the world, but not of the world. The world cannot be in us. Now, it says, for this reason, the world hates you. Verse 21, they will mistreat you because you are mine. What we are called to is not easy. There is a price to be paid. And we better count the cost. Before, you know, you, when you sit down with an ar- architect, you don't just go out and just build your house without sitting down with an architect and seeing everything that you need and how much it's going to cost, right? That'd be kind of foolish to build a house, to start building and, and not really consider the cost. Well, what do you think? It's the same word. We're building a church, and we are going to have to pay a cost. It may cost you your life. It will cost you your popularity. Revelation 12.10 says, Now, now, the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. Why? Why, why does it say now? See, this is, how, this is what Bible study is all about because you've got to pay attention to the little words. Now. Something's happened to say now, okay? So what has happened? It says, for the accuser of the brethren has been cast down. See, when, when, when the devil is cast out of the heavenlies, because right now he's the prince of the power of the air, when he is cast down because of what's going on in Revelation 1 through 12, he will be cast down. He will be taken down and brought here to the earth. And the Bible says, woe to those that inhabit the earth because the devil has come down. Okay? So he won't, be in the prince, he won't be the prince of the air at that point. So the accuser of the brethren has been cast down. Why? Because the saints overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. They did not love their life even when they faced death. 